Hi, my name is Michel Dufresne. I'm an independent consultant in the New York City area specializing in rule-based business application. This is a three-part series in which I describe how we can use the semantic web technology for specifying the domain model of a rule-based ap application. In part one, I talked about how we can use the web ontology language as a modeling language for specifying the domain model. In part two, I talked how we could bring together the description logic formalism with the logic programs formalism in order to write, to write rules on top of ontologies. <coughs> in part three, I use this as a foundation to build a, a model-driven architecture for building the uh, business applications. The web ontology language is a W3C standard that builds on top of RDF and RDF schema and add more vocabulary for describing classes and their properties. Owl come in three flavor. There's owl light, owl DL, uh, which stands for description logic and owl full. Uh, owl DL is of particular interest because it is based on description logic. This provides maximum expressiveness while ensuring that all logical deduction uh, can be computed. A class uh, describes um, a set of the set of individuals with common characteristics. A subclass corresponds to a subset of the parent class. For example, if you have a class that is defined as the set of all of the individuals for which a property A equals 5 and a property B has any value. Then a subclass in, in description logic uh, can be defined as the subset of, those, uh, of this set for which uh, all the individual has a value of B equal 2. The subclass uh, must um, must fulfill all of the axioms of the base class, in this case, A equal to 5. Uh, in object-oriented, we don't have the exact same type of semantic. Actually, in object-oriented, a, a subclass can redefine the semantic meaning of a property of a base class. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, in object-oriented, you would be able to uh, declare a subclass for which uh, A equal to 3, so we would redefine the semantic value of that property. This would not be admissive uh, in description logic because um, the individual of the subclass is not a subset of the individual of the base class because the axiom A equal 5 of the base class is no longer respected in the uh, subclass. So um, description logic is based on a formal logic-based semantic. Uh, consider, for example, class A and B, then you can define the union as <coughs> all of the individuals that belong to class A <coughs> or class B while the intersection would be all of the individuals that belong to class A and to class B. And the complement of class A would, could be defined as all of the individuals <coughs> that do not belong to class A. OWL distinguishes six types of class description. Uh, the first type is uh, a class description can be in term of a class identifier, which is known as a primitive class. For example, um, male and female can be defined as primitive classes. Um, also, a class can be uh, described in term of an exhaustive enumeration of all of the individuals of the class. So, for example, uh, the class day of the week can be defined as the class that has exactly seven individuals, rep each representing a day of the week. 
Also, uh, a de class description can take the form of a property restriction, either on the value of the property in the form of an existential um, property restriction, which means that um, there exists at least uh, one property with a specific value or a value of a specific type. <coughs> And a universal constraint uh, would um, describe a class for which all of the properties have an, a specified value or are, or are of, a of a specified type. Also, property restriction can, can be on the cardinality of the relationship between two classes. So it could be in terms of a maximum cardinality, a minimum cardinality, or a specified cardinality. <coughs> also, a class description can be in terms of the intersection of two other classes. And a class can be in terms of the union of two classes. And also it could be in terms of the complement of a class. <coughs> so these uh, class uh, constructors or class description can be used to uh, build class constructors in terms of class expression. So for example, the class D can be defined as the intersection of class A and class B. So for example, the, uh, the class impressionist painting can be defined as the intersection between the uh, French painting um, style of late 19th century and um, the artifacts that has a paint stroke of unmixed color. So more complex expression can be built. Uh, for example, we could define that an impressionist art collector is defined as the intersection between a art collector and all of the individual for which there exists at least one artifact of type impressionist painting. And as we just saw uh, on the slide before, impressionist painting is defined as the intersection of two classes. So you could build fairly complex um, class constructors all from using uh, a very simple set of uh, operators. So this concludes the first part uh, of the presentation. And on the next part, I will talk about how we could um, bring together the, the description logic with uh, logic programs so to build uh, rules on top of ontologies. Thank you.